Good evening, everyone. Susan Campfield here from SueStampfield.com. Welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday. Every Tuesday evening, 7.30 Central Time, we do a... Uh, we come and hang out in my craft room and we do some stamping and have some fun. So thanks for being here. So sorry, a few minutes late tonight. <laughs> Seriously, I was, I was trying to find enough room on my desk for us to craft. It's that it's that bad, you guys. One of these days, one of these days, you're going to tune in. I'm like, oh, my desk is all clean, but don't hold your breath because <laughs> I'd rather be creating than cleaning. Anyone else agree with me on that? So yes, I got a haircut. Yay. Got summer hair. So uh, ready for the warm weather. So hello. Hello. Thanks for joining me. So good to see you all. So tonight, we're going to make a fun fold card. Yay. Who likes fun fold cards? Me. I do. I do. <laughs> I know many of you do as well. Um, I, those of you that are on my uh, Sue Stanfield project sheet uh, emails got, uh, let's see, is that it? Oh yeah, there it is. If you're not on my free project sheet email, you're welcome to subscribe. Just go to SueStanfield.com, click on subscribe we'll get you all set up. Um, but uh, I send out free project sheets every week. And this last week we had a fun fold one that went out. Hmm. It was here. <laughs> it was here on this desk. I kind of shove stuff over so that we could start. Hmm. Yeah, it's here somewhere. Ah, I see it. Wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't give up on me. <laughs> This one uh, was in the last project sheet email. So, um, and you can find this uh, fun fold card um, tutorial right here on my YouTube channel. I have a whole, did you know I have a whole uh, playlist of fun fold cards? Because I really like fun fold cards. So I like fun fold cards and I like um, uh, card layouts that I can reproduce with different products. So those are probably my two my two favorite things to share, but other things as well. So uh, tonight we're going to do a fun fold card. And um, I got this card in a swap and I recreated it with some different paper and uh, actually sent it out in a swap. For those of you on my team that are doing uh, the my directs, our one for one swap, um, this is one of the, I'm doing all, <laughs> all three groups. <laughs> what was I thinking? Um, and so uh, one group, if you're in that group, you're gonna get this card. So I'm excited to share it. Uh, oh, so good to see everyone. Who doesn't love a fun fold, right? I mean, seriously. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera here. No, no, here we go. See how messy my desk is. I think I've, oh no, are you kidding me? My camera flipped. Hold on. We're, we can't be, we can't be wonky sideways. That's not gonna, that's not gonna fly. <gasps> okay. You're gonna see my mess. We got dimensional papers. We got ribbon and things I just shoved out of the way. <laughs> and now we're right side up. I am so sorry about that, you guys. All right. So tonight we're gonna make a fun fold card and, um, in our my last video, which was Saturday, uh, we made um, I made this card. Uh, I was uh, had to pre-record that one because we were out of town uh, that weekend. So um, I need to I need these things. I don't want to put them too far away because I need them. So there we go. <laughs> so this was the card that I made on that video. So you can find that now. This is what I would call a layout. So I have. A playlist called favorite layouts or you can always look at the one that just says handmade cards and you'll find this card there I reproduced this same card for uh, a, another swap uh, I use different paper and different products would you like to see that one um, I put on my Instagram account today so it's the, exactly the same this is what I mean by a layout that I like a good layout that I can just reproduce with other products so for this one, I used the Hues of Happiness Designer Series paper and the Happiness Abound stamp set. And then, I don't know if you can see it, but I tilt it just right. I used the Stitch Greenery die to do the, um, the background leaves there um, on the two sides. For this one, I used the Nature's Prints bundle and the Sun Prints Designer Series paper. And the Sun Prints comes as a whole suite where you get the paper, this cool 3D embossing folder, 
and the uh, the bundle, the Nature's Prints bundle, which includes the you know the cool dies that where this label came from. But can you see how you can just take one layout, switch it out with the products you have, and recreate it? That's one of my favorite things to do. So, but tonight we're doing my other favorite thing, which is fun fold cards. So I'm going to bring in, and I would love to have your input on um, which pattern of paper we should do for our card tonight. So the paper that we're using, oh gosh, I just looked at the name. I'm gonna forget it. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Oh, I'm laughing because I already like buried it. I had the whole package. <clears throat> it's called Perfectly Penciled Paper. And it is a designer series paper that is, why does my light seem so dark, you guys? Oh, if I raise it up too high, you're going to see too much of my mess. Oh, well, too bad. We need to see, we need bright lights. Um, anyway, I was talking about the Perfectly Penciled Paper. It's a black and white paper. And so it's one that you can... Um, the um you can color it if you want or but we're gonna make it black uh, just leave it black and white without coloring so coloring is always an option i received in the swap i've been talking about one of my team members anita dixon made this gorgeous card with the perfectly penned paper and i absolutely loved it i'm like oh yeah i have that paper uh-huh i can i could make a card with that so so anita inspired me um, my card is is a different fold and layout but i was um this is what inspired me to use that paper so uh let's um bring in the two patterns that i am trying to decide between and i would love your input so one choice and we're going to be using for this particular card we'll be doing a wider strip and a narrower strip i will give you the dimensions here shortly and Seriously, it does not look very bright to me. I'm going to try and, I don't know if that helped at all or not, lighten it up a little bit. And then I'm going to, oh, Jennifer saw she doesn't mind a fun fold card, but it needs to be able to stand on its own because, of course, the recipient will want to display it. Well, that is true, but, you know, there's always magnets in the fridge, right? <laughs> that's always an option. I'm going to go ahead and remove that banner because that's probably going to get in our way. Let's get that out of the mix. So I am hoping that you will um, will comment on which pattern we should use. So this is one option. Let's call this one the floral bouquet. It's got some butter, a butterfly in there. Or other option is actually that same pattern that Anita used for her card, which is the flowers. So let's say bouquet or flowers. Let me know which one uh, you would prefer to use that I use for the card. <laughs> messy desk is a sign of creativity. Well, my, I must be super creative because I got a super messy desk here. I've been in the process of pulling out my old stuff and I got all my old stuff off the shelf that I grabbed things from. But the new stuff is kind of just piled everywhere. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, it's pretty hotly contested here. Um, Bouquet, 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 bouquet. I see a lot of bouquets, a couple of flowers, but I think we're going, oh, oh, there's more flowers hiding up there. Goodness. Mm, flowers, flowers, bouquet, bouquet. It looks pretty. I think the bouquet is, is, is pulled into the lead here, but there were a lot of votes for this one too, because of course you can see with Anita's beautiful card, it's a gorgeous choice. So we're going to, we're going to save this one for, um, I'll probably, you know, I'll probably still make up this card with, with that piece, but, um, we're going to go with this one tonight. So I guess I should show you all how to cut the paper and score it, huh? That would be helpful. <clears throat> I'm just a little discombobulated tonight. Okay. Don't, don't say I'm that way every night. <laughs> all right. Because I am. All right. We're going to pull in our paper trimmer here. And I'm going to cut my cardstock. This is eight and a half by 11 cardstock. I'm going to cut it in half. Um, so that would be five and a half inches. So, so far it's not sounding very fun foldy, is it? But we'll get there. So we have it at uh, five and a half inches. And then, you know what? I'm going to put this away and I'm going to cheat and grab my, um, well, it's not cheating, I guess, but I already have the markers set. 
on my scoring tool here. So um, that way I don't have to measure it again. So we're going to put in our um, five and a half by eight and a half. Now you absolutely could score this on the paper trimmer, but this way I can show off the where the score lines are a little bit easier than I can on the paper trimmer. And I'm brushing it because we're going to do some bossing tonight. And I must have, I must have had a little party with my white embossing powder because I feel it everywhere on my desk. All right. So um, I'm going to grab my stylus tool here. I have my um, eight and a half inch side at the top and I'm going to score at three inches and at seven and a quarter inches. Okay. Ah, now you're seeing that fun fold part, right? So we have that piece score. Let me repeat that one more time. Our cardstock is eight and a half by five and a half, and it's scored at three inches and seven and a quarter inches. And yes, this will probably come out as a project sheet at some point. Uh, not this week, because I've already got two that I promised you guys from previous videos, but uh, there's always next week, right? So we're going to go ahead and fold on those score lines, as you might imagine. All right, so we have our our fun fold card here. So it's going to open up like that. So yes, Jennifer, it would stand for display if you took the belly band off. So that would be possible. If you left the belly band on, then you could go with the stick it on the fridge with a magnet, right? <laughs> Option. So there we have our, our base of our card. And let's bring in that pretty paper, that perfectly penciled paper. It's really hard to say because there's a lot of peas in it. Now, when I cut this paper, um, first, I actually cut it as a whole piece. And I did that because I'm a little, um, is it negative to say I'm a little bit anal? I'm a little exacting when it comes to crafting. And if this pattern didn't match up with that one, it would bug me. So I cut my paper first at three and three fourths by five and a quarter. And then I cut a one inch piece off of that. So I now have a two and three quarter by five and a quarter and a one inch by five and a quarter inch piece. Does that make sense? Let's say that one more time, two and three quarters by five and a quarter and then one inch by five and a quarter. And again, I started with it as a big piece so that the pattern would match up because I'm weird that way. <laughs> Uh, you don't have to. That's totally optional. All right. So then I have a couple pieces of black cardstock. Um, these are, what are these, Sue? Wow, that is a really good question. This one is, um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, this is where we get into the eighth inch. Uh, this is two and seven eighths inches by five and three eighths inches. This one is one and an eighth inch by five and three eighths inches. So basically you take this dimension and you add an eighth of an inch to it. If you're not in a big fan of eighth inches. Okay. So we have those pieces. We're also going to have a belly band. So that is here. So let's go ahead and um, adhere these together. And then we're going to talk decorating because that's the fun part, right? Oh, don't tell me I don't have, I'm sure I have seal. It's just probably, <clears throat> why look, it's right under this package of designer series paper, right? <laughs> right where one might think. So, and this is reminding me that I need to tell you that there is an awesome uh, joining deal right now with the starter kit. You purchase the starter kit, you get a bunch of extra free stuff that matches the new ink colors, including this fun packet of paper. So, um, if you have a long wish list, uh, the best deal we have is the starter kit. And you can get the starter kit and then try out being uh, a demonstrator. You can be a discount shopper and just be a uh, shop for yourself. Or you can uh, have uh, friends come over and stamp with you and they can place orders with you. So I'm just adhering this piece to the um, to the backing piece there. And let's adhere this piece. I'm using my seal for this. I'm doing a very neat job, but that's okay. It's getting sticky. That is the whole point, right? All right. So 
I, this is a very skinny border. So I'm going to just take an extra minute to make sure that I am even all the way around before I press it down. There we go. It is lovely DSP. And I know a lot of people look at that and go, oh, I have to color all that. Nope. Don't have to. Don't have to. We're not gonna. The other thing you could do is if you really wanted a pop of color, you could color one butterfly and just have that really pop off the page because it's colored and nothing else is. But I actually love it just black and white. Um, it's perfect for weddings, really any celebration, birthdays, anything. Um, there's also a pattern in there in this pack that is black and white. Uh, it's leaves. So that one, if you're not a big, you know, if you want something other than flowers some of the time, you would have that as an option as well. So obviously I am just adhering this down to our card base. There we go. All right. So see our patterns match. I just love that. <laughs> Black and white cards are elegant, Joe. I totally agree, agree with you. So, and they're very versatile cards, right? It's actually be lovely for graduation. Um, you know, we often think of black with graduation because of the, the mortarboard caps. So this is going to be my belly band. And I'm trying something a little bit different with this version of the card that's different from the swaps. So this one is uh, nine and a half inches long by three fourths of an inch wide. And I scored it just in one spot at four inches. And then this end I didn't score so that I could sort of custom fit it. So I'm just going to uh, um, find the right spot and just fold that down. And that'll give me a pretty, a very snug um, belly band. The other option is to score this, but when you do it, you score it an eighth of an inch wider than the card. And then it is a little bit loose. So it just depends on how you want it. So I'm gonna just reinforce that crease that we just found. Uh, by wrapping it around the card. So again, one side I had, I had scored it at four inches so that I got that first half. But for the second one, I just found the edge of my card and creased it down. Okay. And now I'm going to uh, adhere that belly band. Now I could put a piece of tear and tape on here. Um, <clears throat> I could. <laughs> find some oh look here's a whole roll how about that yes i'm going to put a piece of tear and tape on here because i have some right in my drawer where it should be so i'm going to put a little bit on this end and then i'm going to put a little bit on this end ripping the paper but that's okay nobody's going to see that and let's grab our uh, take your pick tool and lift that off We'll just chuck it on the floor. <laughs> My floor needs vacuuming anyway. What is a little bit more <laughs> paper? All right, this one I'll put in the trash can. Oh, you guys, I'm a terrible influence, aren't I? All right, so we're going to um, wrap this around and match those up. Now the seam I put at the back of my card because I don't really want that to show. Oh, I got my card upside down. Okay, so I'm gonna have this lap on the left or the right, this one on the left. Doesn't matter. I'm sure you probably could do it the other way, come to think of it. All right, so now the fun begins. Now we're gonna do some decorating. For this card, we're going black and white card. We're going pretty simple and elegant for this one. So we're gonna use a new bundle shocker <laughs> called charming char charming charming not charming charming oh my gosh tongue twister <clears throat> not really but apparently for susan it is charming sentiments the charming sentiments bundle is a lot of greetings and they come with dies to cut out the different messages plus a bunch of bonus images stars hearts birthday candles um, uh, and then some just different elements. This is a flower, some little polka dots, all sorts of, of fun dies. It's actually a huge die set. And those dies are called sentiment silhouette dies. Now this is one where it would make zero sense <laughs> to not get the two together. And of course, when you buy them as a bundle, you save the 10%. So, um, these two, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of standalone dies in here, a few, 
always love a good heart die. But um, but yeah, this would be uh, uh, one that you'd want to get together. So we have a lot of different sentiments here. Um, I have it narrowed down. Gosh. Okay. I'm like, where did I put the die, you guys? Um, okay, so let, let, here's our choice. Um, I have two choices for you because they're already mounted on blocks. Wishing you everything wonderful. So first choice would be everything. Second choice would be wishing you the happiest of birthdays. So everything or birthdays. Now, obviously, the wishing you everything wonderful could absolutely be a birthday card, um, but you're just helping me decide between the big wishing you everything wonderful or the wishing you happiest birthdays. So if you just want to drop in the comments whether you prefer everything or birthdays, that would be fantastic. There are a lot of times in the past years where our, um, the artists at Stampin' Up, when they do the samples, they like to fussy cut out the sentiments on a lot of cards. I'm not a big fan of fussy cutting. So this is the perfect solution because the dies fussy cut and really look how fussy um, all the way around the words. So you get that same look without the work. So uh, we are pretty much 100% um, voting on everything. So I agree with you because this way my card will be really versatile and I could use it for a lot of different things. That'd be great for graduation, for a wedding, for birthday. I mean, that's a nice kind of anything you want kind of sentiment. So we're going to go with that. Okay, I had some cardstock that I could stamp that on. Where did I put that? Oh, here it is right here. Okie doke. All right, we're all set. All right, so we have a piece of basic black cardstock here. And um, I don't know how big it is uh, for this particular greeting. So I think it's two by three. Yep, two by three. And I'm going to emboss this. So let me bring in, I had it here and I set it aside because it's in my way. Let's bring in my little stamping cushion. This is a photopolymer set. So in theory, you actually probably could cut out the, the blank uh, die and then stamp. Um, I, I haven't tried that. I'm guessing I wouldn't do well at that. Um, so I'm going to go with the more traditional way of stamping and then die cutting out the, the piece. So I've got my Versamark ink here. And I'm going to ink up my stamp so it's nice and juicy and I'm going to stamp that on my black cardstock and I can slide this aside out of the way and then I'm going to grab my white embossing powder Now I put my white embossing powder in a little Tupperware container um, and uh, that keeps it uh, a little bit whiter so that I can shake off the excess right back into the container. So I take it out of the little jar it comes in. And so I am just um, sprinkling a lot of powder on here. I don't want to be stingy. And uh, now I give it a good firm tap and I try to get as much of that extra off. So um, that ink I stamped in was very sticky. So that powder has uh, stuck to that sticky ink. And uh, now I'm just getting off the extras and it's pretty strong. So I don't have to worry about knocking off what I don't want to. Um, so I think we've got that pretty good. And let's, uh, let's put this away. I don't trust myself. And then we're going to get out our little oven. An oven? What? Yeah, where did I put it, you guys? I just had it. I can't find anything tonight. What a surprise. All right, so we're going to slide these out of the way. And let's put our charming sentiment here on my fancy dancy embossing oven. This is a piece of cardboard with a foil wrapped around it and some, uh, some paper clips holding it in place. This keeps me from burning my fingers and the foil actually heats up and helps the uh, the uh, powder melt faster. I have a heat gun here. The the this is actually the older stamp with a heat gun. I think the newer one is gray, but they just they work forever. So <laughs> um so this is going to be a little bit loud, so uh, bear with me. Hopefully you can still hear me here. I'll get a little closer to the microphone. 
And I'm just going to uh, heat this powder until it melts. And I can tell when it melts because it goes from kind of a dull color. Let me stop right there. It goes from a dull color to a shiny white color. So let me zoom in here. I don't know if it's really picking up in the light. Yeah, you can just see it there. See the bottom of the G is a brighter white and the top is a little bit dull. The top is not melted all the way. The H, uh, the bottom of the H and the IN have melted. Um, so what you want it all to be that bright white and then you know you've got the whole thing melted. If it's not melted, that powder will just flake off when it dries. I should say when the ink dries. Is it just me or is there something like really magical about embossing powder? <laughs> it's like, it's like, a magic show right in your craft room. So we have melted our powder now and we are ready to die cut this out. So I'm gonna put this aside. And at this point, if you have any, uh, if there were any flecks of white that you did not get off before you melted, things that were outside of the words, um, I maybe have one. Yep, there's one right there at the base of the T. What you can do, and this only works on black cardstock. Um, what you can do is take a Sharpie marker or you could do the black stamp and blends and just uh, dot black uh, permanent black ink on that uh, little white boo-boo. <laughs> and it will just disappear and nobody can see it. So yeah, heat embossing is magical, right? Especially when you... Um, especially when it's gold, but you know, white in, white on black is just, it's just a wow look. It's a look you really can't get with just regular inks because white ink is just not that crisp, right? And you don't get that same appearance. So now we're gonna see if Susan can uh, die cut this out, which is gonna <clears throat> involve me moving. Stop, hold on guys. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. All right. <clears throat> Susan needs a cleaner stamp room, you guys. All right, hold on. And I can tell you, it's not going to happen anytime soon because I have a busy week. We have our big event on Friday. Who knows what our big event is that is on Friday? It's big in my world. <laughs> uh, on Friday is crafter noon. And so I hope you are able to tune back at 3 p.m. Central Time on Friday. If you can't join me live, that's okay. Um, you can always catch the replay and I'll be showing um, our crafter noon featured fun bowl and how to make it. So I hope you tune in for that. Um, so I have our platform number one down here. I'm going to use the new magnetic plate. You can see I cut a lot of these for my swaps. <laughs> Let me grab a, oh goodness, here we go, top plate. Um, so we were talking about the magnetic platform last time. So it is a self-healing, but it does, you know, you get, um, I have made well over 200 cuts on mine. And so you do get little marks, but they don't interfere with anything. Um, it is very, very thick. So it's staying nice and flat, which is awesome. And so I'm going to pop this in here. And again, with the charming sentiments um, and the uh, sentiment silhouette dies, we've got all these dies. This is the one that matches this particular greeting. So um, when you're using these dies, you want to lay it on there so that you can't see any outline. It's literally almost right on top of the words. Um, so you shouldn't see any black border. Uh, you want to just be like right on top. Okay. And I'm going to slide it back a little bit because uh, I'm over here. <laughs> you guys can probably see better than I can. Does that look okay, you guys? I think it's okay. Let's give it a try. All right. Uh, Carol Rosengren says, gold embossing powder turned her into a stamper over 30 years ago, and she's never looked back. 
And Carol, you and I have talked about this before. I am 100% the same. The first time I saw that gold embossing powder melt and turn shiny, I was hooked. <laughs> I was like, I need to do that. Okay, we're going to crank this through. Cuts like butter. Ah, love this new magnetic plate. It's so awesome. Uh, and it does work. Uh, someone asked me in the last video or maybe two videos ago if it works in the big shot. It 100% does. Um, same sandwich, just the platform and the, um, uh, the magnetic plate and one, one plate on top. Works, works great. All right, so we have our, let's see if I can zoom in here so we can take a look at what we just cut out. So how fun is that? Now, like, do you know how long it would have taken me to fussy cut out all of, I mean, and I would not have been able to do it this nicely. So it's a really cool look um, that I was not into until I could do it with dyes. Now I'm all over it. <laughs> so we're going to attach our sentiment to our belly band and decorate that. Now, our other choice, which was voted down, uh, voted off the island, was the wishing you the happiest of birthdays. But let's just look and see what that would have looked like. So that um, would have would have been like that. That would have been nice as well. Um, I do like the bigger. I think I think we made a good choice there. This is actually the one that I used for the swap. Um, so we were uh, we were our, our minds were synced for that one. We were on the same wavelength. Hold on, we're just dropping things, you know, pretty much regular Tuesday night at Susan's at Sue Stamfield Craft Room. I am grabbing the black dimensionals. This is an ideal time to use my black dimensionals because I've got black cardstock going on to black cardstock. So I'm actually going to put my dimensionals right on the belly band um, and then stick my sentiment right on top of them. So the beauty of the black dimensionals is they literally <laughs> disappear when you peel those papers off. And so we're just going to pop this right on there. I'll attempt to get it straight. There we go. And then I'm going to do some embellishments. So I'm hoping you'll help me choose my embellishments. Um, would we like to use the new iridescent pearls? Uh, see if you can see the iridescence there if I tilt them in the light. So they're similar to regular pearls, but they have this uh, iridescence to them. They're just absolutely lovely. Or we could use regular pearls. What else could we use? I'm liking the pearl idea personally. I think rhinestones would be okay. Would also be an okay option. I got something on here. Hang on. It's bugging me. So anyway, oh, well, I'll cover that up with my embellishment. There you go. That's always a fix, right? Um, uh, the sandwich was the base plate, the magnetic plate, this cardstock with the die, and the single cutting plate. Thank you, Teresa. I think I missed a question. I love it when you guys answer each other. Um, so the sandwich I used for the, uh, the newer die cutting machine, and this would be the same sandwich you would use for the Big Shot, if that's what you have. Um, is exactly like Teresa said. Uh, the base, uh, which is number one, let's bring it up here again. Do a little quick review. Number one is the base. Number five is the magnetic plate. And number three is the top plate. There was a typo in the paper that came with this. And it told you to add in the number two uh, thin die adapter that will make it too thick and it will not go through the machine. So uh, Stampin' Up! has uh, put out a correction on that, but this is the right sandwich. If you have the, um, the Big Shot, then you would have your platform, which is similar to this. I think it's a little bit padded in the middle. Or if you have the old style one that has the flip tabs, you would open it all the way and then use these same two, okay? All right, let's see what we're voting on. Pearls or iridescent pearls? I, I pearls? Yeah, I for iridescent or P for regular. I for iridescent, P for regular. That's, <clears throat> or I, I would, I would take rhinestones if somebody thinks we should go rhinestones. Uh, I could be convinced. <laughs> that, that is the better way. So here's what the two look like. We've got our pearls here and our iridescent pearls. They're very similar, <clears throat> except for that iridescence. 
Uh, so you can see pearls and then the iridescent pearls. So I, 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 I'm seeing a lot of eyes, a couple of P's. I think the eyes have it. Ha <laughs> ha. So funny. Okay. So let's do, let's go with the iridescent pearls. And once again, you guys have picked exactly what I did on my swaps. I use this pattern. I use this greeting and I use the iridescent. We are like totally mind melded tonight. Some nights you guys go a direction I didn't think you would. And so, um, but that's good. That's how we learn new things. But tonight we are on the same page. So I am going to um, take my uh, iridescent pearls here. I'm going to grab a big one and I'm going to pop that right here. I have a, um, I don't know how I got a little white something on there and I'm going <laughs> to strategically place my pearl right over it. Hmm, see, all fixed, all gone. All right. And then actually I think I'm going to move that up just a teeny weeny bit. There we go. And then I'm going to grab uh, a tiny one. There are, there are more tiny ones on here than large ones. How many come on this? 150. Um, so I'm going to guess we've got 100 small and 50 large. So I'm going to use one of the larger ones. I should call them medium because they're about the size of the medium regular pearls. So I've got one medium one and I'm going to do two smalls because that, that works out with how they come in the package. I get double the amount of smalls. Does that make sense? And then we're going to put one. Oh, come here, you. It just went crazy. It went off on its own. Just off on a tangent. All right. So I'm just using my um, iridescent pearls to kind of follow my E there. Move this one out just a little bit. There we go. Um, just to follow along the E and outline it there. And then our card will open like this. So Jennifer, this is what I was saying. So it really won't stand up with the belly band on. But if you took the belly band off, oh, we need an inside sentiment. Okay, let's let's talk about that. You know what? I might I might leave it blank because I'm not sure what I would what I would want to use. Um, I could do good luck inside. Um, I could do the birthday inside. Um, is it weird to say wishing you twice? I guess I can say double wishes, right? <laughs> um, and I would probably just stamp it in black on here. Um, but I could do the one that actually goes with this is wishing you everything wonderful because you totally deserve it. Uh, but you could also do wishing you everything wonderful, good luck, and that would be a great graduation card. Um, yeah, lots of options here, um, but I think I'm going to leave it blank because I'm not sure yet what event I need it for. So let's slide our belly band back on, but without the belly band, it will stand up. Just prop it like that. I'll tilt it so you can see what that would look like. And then they could stack the belly band, just put it right in front, you know, that would work. So, or they can pop it on the fridge with a magnet and show off your beautiful handiwork. Um, I do want to give a shout out. I, I forgot to tell you where I got this fun fold idea. Um, I got it in a swap. And let me see who I'm blanking out on who the, I got the card from. And then I'll show you this one. Oh, it's Kathy, Kathy Seal. Um, so this card came from Kathy Seal. It's gorgeous. And that's where I got this fun fold idea. Kathy did hers with that beautiful sun prints paper and the nature's prints bundle. Um, so totally stunning. You can see it's the very same, <laughs> same card. Uh, and then the belly band slides off here. She's got Knight of Navy here. The card base is Knight of Navy. And then uh, inside she's stamped in. I think that's the new starry sky. So that is uh, the inspiration. So thank you so much, Kathy Seal. Uh, for inspiring us tonight for our Funfold project. And thank you all for being here and hanging out with me because you deserve it. Is that the one I should put in there? That is the one that goes goes with it. Absolutely. So, um, but I could also just put in a, a regular birthday sentiment, a happy graduation, um, happy wedding. I have a lot of stamps. <laughs> So I would have a lot of options, right? Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, just a quick reminder to um, subscribe. What are we doing this week for our uh, free project sheets? 
I believe it's this card is coming out. Can you see that? <laughs> My face is in the way here. Let's go right in front of my face. There we go. Um, that card is one. And um, I think it might be this one. I haven't done this one yet, have I? No, I think this is the other one. So those will be going out this week. So uh, once again, you can subscribe. Where, Sue? Oh, here we go. Uh, at cstanfield.com, click on subscribe, and then you'll be, uh, you get those weekly emails. If you have subscribed to the project emails and they're not coming in your inbox, shoot me an email because it could actually be on my email provider's end and we can get it fixed up so that you're getting those ideas. You can reach me at susan at susanfield.com. Thanks everyone so much for joining me tonight. Uh, have a great rest of your evening. Have a great week and we will see you Friday. Are you going to be here Friday for Crafternoon? I hope you are. I am excited. I have a uh, lots to share with you. So cannot wait. Take care and I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye.